Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much, Amaka. And um, we're going to be engaging all of that throughout this month because I feel the Lord is saying, pray and attack from the place of the primaries. You know, the primaries, we don't have control as people. It's, that's why we need more people to be part of, you know, parties because that's, that's, that is critical. We will be present for us at primaries. Amen. All right. Um, happy new month to everyone. This is our first time we're meeting this new month. Um, it's the month of May, it's our month of freedom, um, <laughs> supernatural freedom, unprecedented freedom, like never before, living free. And um, we are starting it with um stuff you guys will be taking us throughout the week on living free. I'm really excited. Um, it's your first time here. You're welcome. If you've never met Safika, you get to meet her. Apart from that, my biological sister, my eldest. I would like to speak this English. Yes, my eldest, not immediate eldest sister, but you know, but um, she's an anointed one of God that has such a great anointing for the message of deliverance. You know, living free. You know, a lot of us we think ah, and I tell people, people say, why do I need deliverance? I tell God has. Paid it all. God has done it all. Are you living? Are you living all? Are you living in the reality of all Christ has done? It else, you need to constantly pray for yourself, you know, and um, not from place of fear, but understanding how it is done. What has happened over time is people think they have to go to a place, you know, be in a place, you know, be with said, find people to do when they are engaging on the prayer of deliverance or living free. Forgetting that that's one aspect, but the other aspect is. You can't keep going back to until you find somebody until what happens if you're not available. So is that your freedom on old, you know, and just everything else God will be asked on how to pray right, how to continue to pray the prayer of freedom, freedom from your mind and everything. With Jesus Joy, can we welcome Sister Fikayo again to this great meeting? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. P.I., thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for having me yes, here. So happy I, to I see you. To, even me, ah, I don't miss you, Taya. It's so good to hear your voice again. Hi. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate my sister and everyone, the team members. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come again and share the word of God. Father, let's just say a word of prayer. I know we've prayed. I just go into just appreciate God again. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. All to God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the one that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Let's do this together. We praise the Lord, we praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he has done. I love that song so much because it's the summary of self-deliverance. It's the summary of our Christianity. It's the summary of redemption. It's the summary of our theme, living free. It is via the plan and great mystery of redemption that we are able to stand glory to god <laughs> hallelujah you know sometimes eh, i just think about it and i just laugh at the devil glory to god because you know what the devil in genesis 3 all right when man fell and he took you know dominion he felt that was it of course we know that the Bible says that when Christ died and he said, it is finished, and he gave up the ghost, foolish devil. <laughs> he thought he had ended Christ. If he didn't know what would happen next. Glory to God. Jesus said, it is finished. And the Bible says the cutting of the temple. Now, I don't have the dimensions, but I, there's one teaching that the dimensions of the cuttings of the temple was given. How, how massive the cutting, you know, that, that, was, that was covering the holies of holies back then, how we tore into two, glory to God. And Jesus said, it is finished. Meaning the old covenant is over. 
the new has begun. The new covenant, you know, was enacted. That means Christ, God was saying, you know, it's finished. My, my people will no longer have to wait to come into the temple, wait to come into the holies of holies, all right, to assess me. I am coming to leave the door. So God came out. Glory to God. He came out. And that is why after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts and started dwelling in us. Hey, glory to God. So the devil did not know what was, what was coming to him, for him, and his small, small boys, all those demons and funny, funny spirits, all those things that seem to uh, try to oppress us. Christ has taken full dominion over them. Praise God. So the Bible says that, and if you look at um, Ephesians 4, it says that Christ descended before he ascended. So when Christ descended, he didn't go and play. He didn't go and pray. pray. He didn't go and play. All right. When Christ descended into hell, when he descended into the lower parts of this world, he went to do several things. One of it is to conquer. He went, you know, God, God gave Christ his name via several platforms. One of it is to conquest. Christ fought and defeated the devil. Glory to God. So that is to say that each time we wake up in the morning, let's, oh, I, I, so I love singing that song because it just reminds me of what Christ has done. So each time we wake up, let's always thank the Lord. Let's thank Jesus for redemption. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory to God, hallelujah, living free. This week is going to be amazing. The Holy Spirit is going to do great things in our midst. There's going to be several miracles, deliverances, deliverance from the mind. We're going to, we're, the Holy Spirit is going to work on our minds because that is the place where self-deliverance starts from, the mind. We're going to break free from all form of oppression. There's going to be liberation. There's going to be uh, outbreaks of miracles, financial breakthroughs, as many things as you're desiring, get ready, get ready. I will be moving as the Holy Spirit leads, but I know that we're going to talk about several things. One of it will be how to keep your deliverance because people have constantly asked me, Pikayo, after your self deliverance, has the spirit husband come back? Ah, I'll answer that question where we go on. I'll also share as the time goes on during the course of this week, how to keep your deliverance, what we should be doing, what we shouldn't do. But today, I just want to lay a very small um, foundation you know, for what we're going to build on in the next um, few days. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I will be looking and speaking from the book of Mark. Let's quickly open our Bibles to Mark 5. Mark 5. Mark 5. Glory to God. So let me start by saying that remember that Christ is not coming until the rapture. I, I, I know we all know that. So I'm just reminding us. All right. So praise God. We know that the second coming of Christ will be the rapture when he would come. All right. But we are going to be looking at him in heaven. All right. His feet will not touch the earth. He's going to be suspended. Then he's going to, we're going to go. We're going to, ah, is anybody excited? After my eschatology class, I started desiring heaven. I started looking forward, you know, to what rapture will be like. You know, before when we, we used to say, we used to think about rapture as, I don't know, there wasn't a clear picture until it's dawned on me that it's a beautiful experience and we all await it with joy. So second coming of Christ would be when we go. But remember, let me just do a recap to refuel and some other teachings that I've shared. I've talked about the different dispensations we have read about were not born there, but we've read about them from scriptures and from other, you know, commentaries and other biblical um, articles, okay? We've read about the dispensation. So there are seven dispensations. We have seen five. We have read about five. We are in the sixth and the seventh is coming. I'm going somewhere. So we have the dispensation of innocence, dispensation of conscience. I hope I'm not too fast. Dispensation of the human government. We've, we've read about the dispensation of the, of the um, patriarchs, and um, that's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and etc. We've read about the dispensation of the law, all right? That, uh, all right. And we've also read, and we are leaving. Oh, a little bit. Okay, I'll slow down. <laughs> we are right now, we are in the dispensation of grace. 
We've seen the dispensation of innocence, dispensation of conscience, dispensation of human government, all right? Dispensation of the time of Abraham and et cetera, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all right? The 12 sons, all right? We, we have read about the dispensation of the law. Now we are in the dispensation of grace, all right? Then we're going to experience the dispensation of the millennium, all right? So praise God. That means from now till when the dispensation of grace will be over, which would be at the point of rapture, we are going to see strange, funny, funny, funny things, all right? We are going to see the devil because he knows his time is already up, all right? He's even, he, has no, he has no control over us as believers, all right? But because he knows that the time is really ticking and running for him, he's going to be totally, totally destroyed, all right? Praise God. He's going to try to push a lot of things on people, all right? Even believers, we need to stand well. That's what the Bible says. We need to resist him steadfast, steadfast in faith. We resist the devil steadfast in faith. Through our faith, standing steadfastly, we resist the devil. So before the second coming, we're going to see all forms of things, all the things we're hearing about, all the things, from different forms of oppression we're seeing happening to people in the world because we are exempted already, because redemption has brought us out. We're going to see it. However, 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 I want to quickly talk about something. As believers, because we still, <coughs> we still live in this earthly vessel, we still have our bodies. Remember, we are spirit. We, live, we have a soul and we live in a body. Now, because we are still on earth, um, you know, the way the devil is, very stupid somebody like that. If you don't go and meet him, he will look for you, but we are covered. I mean, I'm trying to say that the kind of, the, the battle we have, um, some, um, um, if you are going, how do I say it? If you are on your lane, you will still be part of the battle. All right, so some form of the, one form or the other, we have to be on guard. We have to be on guard. People ask me when I take them through um, self-deliverance sessions or mentoring, is there a time to rest? I said, as believers, we rest in the Lord. We rest in faith. We rest in the reality of what Christ has done through redemption, but we don't rest. We don't slumber. So this morning is just a wake-up call. It's just a wake-up call to my family, you and I. Wake-up call as I was preparing, I was reminding myself as well. Is wake up call. There is no slumbering. The devil is not sleeping. The devil, one of my lecturers was explaining the domain of familiar spirit. And it, it just made new sense. You know, we used to hear familiar spirit. You know, he said those spirits has been since our, since, since time, they've been deaf, grandfather, grandmother, great grandmother, great, great, great. So they are familiar with a lot of things. They know, they are, you no know, demons are not those funny, funny spirits. They are wise. They are wise. But we have the mind of Christ, so we are wiser. We have the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from dead. Oh, glory to God. We are wiser. We are wiser. We are stronger. We are more powerful. But until we come into the full realization of who we are, we might unconsciously be caught among what will happen, what is happening. But that is not our portion. Praise God. Praise God. So, see, some people, some people feel, actually, I don't have spirit husband, but no problem. Have you fought, finished fighting the battle of your mind? You know, that's the greatest battle. The battle of the mind, and I, I trust God to get to talk about it. When the Bible talks about put, pulling down stronghold and imagination and every, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, sometimes we feel that scripture is referring to when it says pulling down stronghold, we now begin to pray, Father, every stronghold in my family, every stronghold, it's okay to pray, but if you look into the context of that scripture, it's talking about things from within, imagination. So if you feel, hey, I'm not affected by all those spirit husbands, the truth is that there are still things you need to contend with. Your mind, your thoughts, imaginations, fantasies, yes. And they are more powerful. Those things, those seemingly simple things that we feel, maybe it's just imagination and thoughts that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. They contend against the reality of God. So if you don't pull those things down, you will never believe that God can save you. You will never believe the things redemption has done. You will not be able to comprehend that I am free. So when it goes to, when it, when it comes to um, um, self-deliverance, when you keep, if you don't pull down those imaginations, I'm jumping into another day, but well, let's just flow. 
you will keep feeling I'm under oppression because each time I speak to people, I just see the battle of the mind, the battle of the mind. But let's not go there today. Let's not go there. Let's go to Mark 5. Mark 5. Uh, saying, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Can I see wake up in the chat room? I'm awake. Maybe you want to declare, I'm awake. I am not slumbering. I am not sleeping. I'm awake. In this dispensation of grace, glory to God. Glory to God. My family, this is the time you must make use of your full dominion. You know what? I, 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 if you go to, okay, before we look at Mark, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 13. I saw something there that fascinated that, you know, caught my attention. All right, praise God. Prophecies, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Prophecies and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless. Did anybody see that? I'll take that again. Prophecies and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge, that means word of wisdom, word of not knowledge, all right, will become useless, but love will last forever. Prophecies and speaking in unknown tongues will become useless. Wow. So there's a time, it is coming a time or a time will come that we won't speak in tongues again. That means you want to say, Baba, di, bada, baro, sotaya, and maybe it won't come. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine how it will be. So that means my brothers and sisters, including me speaking, we must wake up. This is the time to speak in tongues. When we get to heaven, I doubt, based on this scripture, prophecies and speaking in tongues, we cease. That's what another scripture, put, that's another translation puts it. That means after the rapture, all right, there is no dominion. You're not taking dominion over anybody anymore. You can't, you can't exercise any dominion. You can't, as in there will, be, there will be no need. There will be no need. So I'm wondering, and I'm thinking to myself, maybe we not get to heaven and be saying, yeah, when they play the, you know, we used to hear that, they, we, we, we imagine that sometimes, yeah, you're, when we get to heaven, our memories will not jump away. Because remember, the rich man and Lazarus, all right? Our soul and spirit will depart. That means we still have our memories. We will still, we still rec recognize each other. We will still remember things. What I'm trying to say is when we get to heaven, we must not say, yeah, I wish I slapped the devil then. Ah, why didn't I? Because the rich man could remember his brothers, could remember Lazarus. He would even re recall Father Abraham. What am I trying to say? If prophecies we cease, many other things we cease. Many other things. We're not going to be wrapped up and start dealing with the devil. We're going to forget about him. We're going to forget about demons. So what is our stand here? to take full authority, to walk in full deliverance, to wrath, to continue the greater works. We feel greater works is just the big things Jesus did. Greater works for us in our dispensation where things are really, 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 you know, dwindling away and people are forgetting what it means to be in Christ. Greater works is taking authority. Your own greater work can be different from my own greater work. Your greater work might be able, might mean to take authority over one simple headache by faith. Your greater work might be to take over simple headache. Your greater work might be to trust God for healing for your family member. Your greater work might not be recorded in any book, but it is that there are things we do that exalts the name of Jesus and builds faith in us and glorifies God. Praise God. So when we think of raising of Lazarus, raising of this, we get scared that greater works, greater works start from little, little things, little, little things. But I wanted to show us something. Okay, I showed us in, let, let's go to Mark. I, I, begin to, I need to begin to, you know, put it together. So let's go to Mark. You know, for a very long time, I have always studied this book of Mark. And I used to wonder, ah, ah, Jesus, this Mark. -y. Okay, let's read it together. Let's read it together. I'll quickly read. Mark was five mark five i'm using the N nlt translation and i'll move in between others so they arrived at the other side of the lake and the region of the gerasenes when jesus climbed out of the boat take note jesus climbed out of the boat a man possessed by an evil spirit came out of the tomb to meet jesus hmm. all right glory to god now the man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. There was one time I sat under a teaching regarding this Mark 5, and we, we saw, see, the, the kind of insanity this man had, no be level one. So we should, we should be careful what we say, that person is possessed. We have not possessed people. This is a typical example 
of a demonic possession, all right? And I'm trying to say that if this guy can be dispossessed, let's go on, let me not jump. When, okay, so verses three, this man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained with, a, with even a chain. Whenever he's put into chains and shackles, he often was, as he often was, he was always in chains and shackles. He snapped the chain from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Wow, I love that. Day and night, he wandered around the burial caves in the hills, hover, hovering and cutting himself with sharp stones. Hmm. Glory to God. You know, so I, I, was, I was thinking to myself, I went to check other translations. I like the way the KJV says it. KJV says, neither could any man tame him. That means the whole region, the whole area, nobody could tame this guy. I love, I love okay, the NLT says, no one was strong enough to subdue him. The amplifier says no one had the strength enough to restrain or tame him. Ah, in the whole region, nobody could restrain him. So the Kukuma moved him, and the man moved himself into the cave and was staying there. Verses five. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still coming at a distance, I love this part. Hmm. When Jesus was coming at a distance, the man saw him and ran to meet him and bowed low before him, all right, with a scream, with a shake, and he screamed, why are you interfering with me, son, Jesus, son of the most high God? Take note of that. Why are you interfering? Can you underline or just take note of that word, interfering? Now, a demon is, you can, you, 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 you can almost think to yourself, a demon talking to Jesus like this? Jesus talking to my Lord like this, why are you interfering with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, in the name of God, I beg you, don't touch on me. Let me make you guys smile. While I was studying this, you know, I just pictured the Nigerian picture. We are God waiting now, waiting now, waiting now. Wait, 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 why you can't put my mouth on my matter? I, as I was just thinking to myself, well, how we can look at this in our time, that how we tell ourselves, I bet come out mouth. I bet that was how, the demon, you know, was seemingly speaking to Jesus, don't interfere in my matter. Now, let's look at how some other translations put that part. All right. You know, um, verses seven, that same verse seven, if you look at the KJV, the KJV, the demon told Jesus, I adjure you, I adjure thee by God. <clears throat> I adjure thee by God that thou torments Torment me not. Now, the guy has been possessed. But when Jesus appeared, even the, the demon couldn't stop the spirit. Man. So the man had a bit of sanity. So every situation bows to our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The demon couldn't stop him because the, another translation says he saw Jesus, he ran and he bowed in worship. I love that part. Everything tormenting you, every situation in the name of Jesus begins to bow to the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we rise up to take our positions, they will just begin to fall off. Everything, everything, small or big, they begin to fall off, fall off in the name of Jesus. The demon couldn't stop him from running to Jesus. He could, he, it was when he got to Jesus that the demon spoke. So let's go on. I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. Amplify says, the same verses um, seven. He says, what have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God. What is there in common between us? Can you imagine? I love the amplified. What have I got to do with thee? What have thee, let me say it again. What have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God. What is in common between us? <laughs> Glory to God. I solemnly implore you. Take notes of that word again, implore. The first one, KJV says, adjour. Okay? This one says, I solemnly implore you by God. Hmm. Do not begin to torment me. The message says, what business do you have? What business do you have, Jesus? Son of the most high God, messing with me. Oh, glory to God. I love all these translations. That's the message translation of verses 7, Mark 5. Why are you messing with me? I swear to God, don't give me a hard time. Now, the TPT says, leave me alone, Jesus, son of the most high God. Swear to God, swear in God's name, all right, that you won't torture me. Now, you know, why 
did the devil speak this way to Jesus? Now look at the word adjure, implore, solemnly implore, all right? If the word adjure means to adjure, means to, they are legal terms. I'm going somewhere, I'm going to wrap up now. They, and this, we are, set, we are setting the foundation. All right, why are you messing with me? <laughs> you can you imagine me? Oh, but waiting concern me and you now. Waiting now, waiting now. Why you put matter? Why you took me out for my matter? Praise God. To adjure means to command, to, to command solemnly, to warn that penalties may be invoked. That's the dictionary meaning of to adjure. To adjure other words means to petition, entreat, ask, authorize, commission, compare, com compare, compel, constrain, oblige, require. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about implore. Another word that was used, implore was used, solemnly implore was used by the amplified version. K. Davis said adjure, okay? All right, um, NLT. NLT says, I beg you, all right, I beg you. Now, to implore means to, listen to these guys, to implore means to appeal to, to appeal to, those are legal terms, to petition, to solicit, to ask, to invoke, to sue. Did you guys see that? To sue. Implore means to sue. So the demon was saying, I can sue you, oh Jesus, I can sue you, but why did he say that? I'm coming there to claim, to command, to compel, to supplicate, to plead to. Now, why was the demon saying this? I'm coming, just hang there for me for one minute. Let's quickly run and read the rest. All right, so I say that again. Why are you interfering? Why are you interfering with me? I'm back, I'm back to the um, Mark 5. I'm using the NLT now. Let's go back to NLT. Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In the name of God. Now, he called on the name of God. Kai, demon self, they know authority. They know authority. They know who is who. They knew that, hey, you know what it means? I, I, you know when people say, I appeal to Caesar. When Paul was supposed to be tried and he said, I appeal to Caesar, he appealed to an higher authority. That means I won't take the matter from your hand, though. I won't, and I will back admit. I, 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 I implore you in the name of God, son of the most high God. Now, there's no time for me to begin to talk about how did they even know each other? How did they know each other? All right. So I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had already asked, said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Verses nine, then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And can I quickly say here, family, we are not in a place of negotiating with demons. This is a peculiar situation, all right? And this is how Jesus went about uh, his own deliverance and uh, delivering the guy. For us, we cast out demons and we move. We don't negotiate. So you see people saying, what is your name? How many are you? Guy, that is speak the word, speak the word and move. Command it to get lost and you move away. Glory to God. Let me run because of my time. Five minutes more. And he replied, my name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirit, take note of this family, another word. Then the evil spirit begged him again and again to send them, not to send them into a distant place. They begged Jesus again and again. This happened, there happened to be a large head of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send those into those pigs, the spirit begged. Mm. They were begging not to go into a distant land. So they were saying, Jesus, send us into the pig, send into the pigs. Let us enter them. Look at 13. Jesus, so Jesus gave them permission. Take note of that. Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirit came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of 2,000 sheep, uh, 2,000 pigs, plunged down into the steep hillside, into the lake, and drowned in the water. Family, this is where I'm going to, and I wrap up. The truth is this. The truth is this. Demons, the devil, they have a legal right to operate on earth. Now, I'll put a balance. They have a legal right. Jesus gave them the permission. Have you ever wondered why didn't Jesus just kill those demons for us? Those demons that they were not killed, they are still, they are still, they are still, they are still alive. Oh. Praise God, you know, spirits don't die. So why did Jesus not kill the demons? He could have, because I've wondered over the years that why did Jesus just, why did he allow them go into pigs or oh, Jesus would just kill them for us? Kill them for us. They have a legal right until the rapture until finally the battle, you know, the battle of Armageddon, where everything will end by just one word, Jesus is going to end everything. And those that battle, people think we are going to fight. Battle, battle, we are not battling anything. 
we are triumphantly riding with Christ and he's just going to speak and the devil is going to become nothing. Glory to God. But why in this particular verse did Jesus not destroy the demons? And I'm going to give you 10 quick reasons. 10 quick reasons. Why? 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 The Bible says Jesus gave them the permission. Why? Number one, he knew their time wasn't up. So yes, they have, they have a legal right. The devil has a legal right over unbelievers, not over you. If you are a child of God, if you are born again, you have right and dominion over the devil. Jesus knew their time wasn't up. That was why they were appealing to God. I, I, I'll call your papa. I'll call your papa because we, we know how this matter be now. No, make believe or me, we chop all this food now. Praise God, but not for us. We are sons of God. We are sons of God. Praise God. He knew their time wasn't up and they had legal right on earth over certain people apart from believers, because the moment we became born again, the moment we made that declaration, I received into my life, I accept you, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, became operating. And the Bible says, when a man is in Christ, he just, um, all things are past, new has become. So that happened to us and the devil's dominion, bam, was cut off. Number two reason, he knew they can't function much more, so much in animals. So he allowed them, you know, demons like to possess animals or human beings, all right, all those funny, funny spirits. So he said, let them go into animals. They can't really function more. more. They, they prefer human beings. So he casted them into animals, they, you know, which they don't really like. So he also, they, they will suffer there. He cut off their powers and etc. Number three, Jesus knew, and this is where I'm getting excited again. Jesus knew redem the God's redemption plan, all right, was soon going to be fully fulfilled. All right. He knew that Ephesians 2, 7, which says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in the kind, in his kindness through Jesus Christ. He knew that we have, we, we have been, we are going to be fully redeemed. So he didn't bother. Okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. He also knew, praise God. So why did Jesus leave those demons that because those demons they are not dead though but don't that, that's not to put fear into us that's to say and i'm going to see that in a bit praise god praise god praise god greater is he that is living in us than he that is in the world if you look at ephesians 4 9 praise god trying to quickly run ephesians 4 9 says that um, praise God. Notice that he said he ascended. This clearly means that Jesus also descended to our lowly world. And it is the same one who descended is the one who ascended high than all the heaven so that he might fill the earth, the universe with himself. So Jesus knew I'm going to descend and destroy them. I'm going to go and meet the Organa, no problem. I'm going to make Colossians 2 and Colossians 2 14 15 happen soon. I don't need now. I'm going to make a public disgrace. Yeah, we're going to disgrace the devil and all this funny, funny spirit. No, no problem. So he knew he was going to descend and ascend. Jesus knew, all right? So he left them because he knew that Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1 from 19 was going to become a reality in our age. Remember that Ephesians 2 says in the age to come, he knew that in the age to come, he might show his exceeding riches of his grace through what Christ has done. Now, Jesus knew that Ephesians 1.19, that says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness. God was, he, as in, he just believed that we would come into that knowledge that the greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. He was, God, Jesus knew that we would come into that revelation that the same mighty power that raised him from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly places, you know, now he is far above principalities and powers leaders or anything else not only in this world but also in the world to come god has put all things under the authority of christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church benefit of the church benefit of the church benefit to church and the church is his body it is made full and complete by christ who fills all things everywhere with himself you and i are the church the church is not the building jesus knew that if philippians 2 9 Philippians 2, he knew that after descending and winning the conquest and everything, he knew that God will elevate him. He will be given the name above all names. I love the part that says in Ephesians 2.10, the KDV says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of things on he in, on, in, he in heaven, things on earth, and things under. Jesus also was confident. He was confident that Matthew 28, 18 to 
the end, 18 to 20, was going to happen. He just knew. He just knew. And he said, all power and authority has been given to me. All power and authority, verses 18, all power and authority has been given to me. Now go. That is where we got the legal right to use the name of Jesus. All power has been given to me. Oyana, take him. All power has been given to me. Take it. All power has been given to me. Take it. What are we to do with the power and authority that Christ has given to us? He knew. He didn't bother. He was able to tell those demons to just go into the pigs. Go into the pigs and be relaxing there. My sons are coming. Redemption will be wrath. They will deal with you. Why? He knew that Luke 10, 17, the Bible says in 19, Luke 10, 19, Luke, I have given you authority over the power of the enemy and you can walk among the snakes, scorpions and crush anything. Nothing will injure you. Jesus knew that we still give them, I'm giving them authority. Remember in Luke, in Luke 4, 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and to, uh, has uh, anointed me to set um, the people free, to release the oppressed. And he ended by saying, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. Glory to God. And to, last two points. Jesus knew that Mark 16, 17 to 18 would become a reality, even in our time. Mark would become a reality. What is a Mark 16, 17, 18? Glory to God. 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 He said, these miraculous signs will accomplish those who believe. Who believe? Who believe? They will cast out demons. We are meant to cast out demons. We are meant to tear down oppression. We are meant not to allow headache. We are meant not to allow any form of oppression. Self-deliverance is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's not a once and off thing. It's a lifestyle we live. You see anything that wants to look like it is not Jesus in my life, you take authority. That's self-deliverance. You speak the word and you don't do it from the place of a victim or the militant church or the church that is still confused. We do it from that standpoint of victors, of sons. Remember, we are sons. In the Old Testament, they were servants of God. They were servants. That's why you hear, oh, they're faithful servants. But we are sons. We have been we have been we have been raised with Christ. They said they will cast out demons in my name, Mark 16, 17. They will speak in new languages and they will handle snakes and, and, and safety. And they will they will handle snakes with safety, with safety. You can look at snakes from different perspectives, physical snakes, spiritual, every form of demon. You will handle them, you will throw them away. Glory to God. You could see the typical example in Acts when the Bible says um, a snake fastened itself. On Paul's hand. What do you shook it into the fire? Glory to God. That's how we get. We're shaking off everything that is not God off this week, this week, this week. I love this part. They will drink anything poisonous and it will hurt them. If you are here under the sound of my voice, you eat in the dream and you wake up, you are scared. Don't worry, just go to this scripture and declare this scripture. The Bible says, the Father, thank you for your word. You said I will eat anything, I will drink anything poisonous, and it won't hurt me. Glory to God. You just use those scriptures to change everything. And finally, 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 why did Jesus not bother about those demons, 2,000 of them? Hmm. Glory to God, glory to God. <sighs> oh, glory to God. Now, 2,000 demons, 2,000 demons in one person, 2,000 demons in one person drowned, okay, um, 2,000, the, we don't know the number of demons that were there, but <clears throat> 2,000 um, pigs were drowned. That is one man. Now, think about the same spirits, the spirit of God. Are demons, remember the devil was created. The devil was created. He's a created being. God was not created. So if demons can drown pigs, how much more? The Holy Ghost living inside of us. The you know, when we think about the Holy Ghost, it's, it's not a theme. It's not somebody. It's the third Godhead. Is God in human form inside of me. That means I can't be limited. I can't. I, there's power. The power that created the world. The power that was in Genesis 1. In the beginning, the, the, there was uh, darkness all over and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the water. It is that same spirit, which is the activator of the miracles, which is the powerhouse of God that is inside of us. He, one person, demons was expelled, it drowned 2,000 sheep, pigs. How much more? The Holy Ghost 
the explosive mechanism, the powerhouse of God, this, the spirit that will destroy spirits. There is no demon that can affect you, that is can afflict you. If you find out anything around you, speak the word, cast it out. Because Mark 16 says it all. Finally, the 10 reason is this. Christ trusts us. That is why he didn't bother with those pigs, those demons going into. He trusts us. He trusted us. He trusted us. John 14, 12. Praise God. And that's my last point. Why did Jesus not bother? Okay, there's only killing them. Praise God. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, anyone who believes in me, anyone who believes in me, not a pastor, not a sister, not a deacon, anyone, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater ones because I go to be with my father. And you know what? God, 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 Jesus did not leave us powerless. He gave us the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So when I, it's, it's better I go, it's better I go, it's better. And remember that Jesus came, all right? He came through incarnation. He came in form of man, 100% man, 100% God. He, that's why he had to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So he didn't come. He left all his divinity and power to come here. He was, um, he was a man that functioned, all right? He came in man, human form, and he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. He went into the wilderness, and when he came out, he was empowered. Glory to God. Jesus trusts us. He trusted us then. He's still trusting us. He's trusting us to take full delivery of our life. He's trusting us to take the word, to cause every un un unwanted thing in our lives to be eradicated. Self-deliverance is not one special package. It's an everyday affair. Can we just lift up our hands and glorify God? Makadoshiara. Just begin to declare the same spirit that raised Christ from dead dwells inside of me and quickens my mortal body. It quickens my mortal body. I wake, I wake myself from every slumber, every tiredness, every laziness, every procrastination, in standing in faith, standing in the right place, in doing the right things I need to do to live the fullness of my of my redemptive right. In the name of Jesus, if you look at the book of Acts, Paul said, I think it's Acts 30, if I'm not mistaken, he said, he said, I commend it to God and the word of his grace, which is able to deliver, to give you your inheritance among the saints. I want you to declare, Father, grace to embrace the word, to stay in the word, to make the word a priority, to live in the word, then to live the word. We don't just have to study the word. We need to begin to live the word. I receive that grace. Fresh fire upon my altar. Fresh fire upon my meditation. Revelation comes alive in me. My heart is flooded with light. In the name of Jesus, I come into full consciousness of what Christ has done for me. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. No longer will believers be tossed around. We are no longer going to be tossed around. Everybody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We are coming into a revival this week. <laughs> can we celebrate the Holy Spirit for your word? Can we celebrate the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. Thank you for moving mightily in our midst. We give you praise for this day one. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Wait, hold on. I'm six minutes just, late. Sorry. No, no problem. I want you to just take another five minutes to pray over us. I don't know about you, but every time I listen to that, I'm stirred up in my spirit. A lot of you need to go back and listen to stuff. She was really rushing, but I know she was trying to set the foundation. She'll share more of her story tomorrow and all of that. So you understand where she's coming from. But I woke up this morning, Safika, with a word out of darkness into the marvelous light. That's first Peter 2, verse 9. And I felt the Lord was saying that come out of darkness. Like if I see if there's still one percent darkness in your life, 
If I say we operate under one percent darkness, is in your finances, is in your mind. I just feel like that thing you said, you know, I think Jesus has not said anything when those demons started reacting. He just appeared. He just appeared. Yes. And that's all those drama happened before he asked them their name and cast them out. And thank you for, I've never seen in that light, like the reason why Jesus did not bother. I knew there was a, like, okay, why didn't he just, he, because he, for me, he trusted us. He knew what was to come. He knew what was to come and was waiting. But I don't know if you want to declare over us or make, invite us into a place of prayer. You share with us and then on me time, I will just pray together that Lord appear in our life. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes. But there's the, the, the scripture that says that um, 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 we are the light of the world. Like God, let your light. I think Ephesians 1 says that that the illumination of our minds, that, um, what's that, how did you say that? Um, and I pray that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. Okay. Like Lord, just let there be light. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The word is Genesis 1. Let there be light in our life. Mm. Let mm. the Holy Ghost, let God appear. Because and let, let everything that is of you begin to shake up by the invitation of God into our lives. I don't know if that makes sense. That yes. we invite God together. Our guys say we'll pray and invite God again, like never before. We carry God. Well, let's acknowledge him like God, you are well, like God takes full charge of our life. I don't know if that makes, but that's what was in my, as we're speaking, like 20 minutes, he just appeared. Mm, mm, and now he's dwelling in us and he's looking like he's struggling space. Do you understand? Not because, yes. struggle, because we are not aware. We are not aware. I, know, I don't know, just lead us in that prayer or something like that. I don't know. Whether it's a prayer of repentance for all of us, or whether it's a prayer of consecration, or whether it's a prayer of acknowledgement. Lord, we are sorry in any way. We don't, we are not aware of who you are. That's, I don't know. Yeah, that's Pray, Praise God. Thank you, P.I. Thank you, P.I. You just, um, you took the Ephesians prayers out of my heart. And I was just thinking about it. That one of the prayers we can quickly, we were going to quickly pray is the Ephesians prayers. I know Kenneth Hagin said he's prayed that prayer over a thousand times. That he kept on praying that the eyes of my understanding. For me, I encourage people, it's a daily prayer. You can do it once a day. In fact, there are like four of them. There's Ephesians 1, all right? Maybe somebody can take this down. These are the Pauline prayers, all right? They are very, they are, they are scriptural prayers straight from the Bible. Fantastic. Ephesians 1, the 16 to 23 prayers. The Ephesians 3, 14 to 21 prayers, all right? So me, I, print out, I printed out mine. I printed my own out, so I, I, so I don't have to be lazy about it. There's the Colossians 1, 19 to 14. There's the 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 to 12. There's the Philippians 1, 9 to 11, and Romans 15, all right, praise God, and Romans 15, 13, praise God. I think I want us to start. You know, if you, I, I saw something Can you call it again? Can you call it again? Just Ephesians, call it. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. There's Ephesians 3, Ephesians 3, 14 to 21, beautiful prayers. Scriptural, good answers will come. And they cover everything. Ephesians 3, all right, 14 to 21 is the second one. There's Colossians 1, 9 to 14. Colossians 1, 9 to 14. There's 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 to 12. 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 to 12. All right, and there's Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Philippians 1, 9 to 11. And yes, Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Then we have Romans 5, 13. Romans 5, 13. You know, any area, if there's any area that we are still struggling with as believers, yes. Romans 15, Romans 15. Yes, Romans 15. All right. 13, Romans 15, 13. I want to say this. If God has told you to do anything, there's any assignment, please run to into it. There's anything, I'm not talking about just ministry now, anything God has called you to do, this is the time. Once rapture happens, everything is over. Everything is over. There's nothing to be done again. We're going there to be with him forever. This is the time to do the work. This is the time to do the greater works. I was looking at, you know, for the first time, I saw Luke 24 in another way, in another way. Remember the Bible says, 
all right, that Luke 24 from verse 17. The Bible says that Peter, I don't know who the other person was, and the Bible says in, some days later, Jesus' followers were walking to the village, all right, and as they were walking, Peter was part of them. Jesus appeared to them, but they didn't know. Jesus now said in verse 17, I'm looking, talking about, before we pray, Luke, uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Enemos, yes. Yeah, Enemos. Um, Luke 24, verse 17, Jesus said, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? He started explaining things to them. He started explaining things to them, and they didn't know. So you can be in Christ and not know what he really is like. And that is very key. So they didn't know. I, I was amazed. I was wondering that even Peter, you know, I was wondering how come they didn't know he was telling them, was explaining things. All right. Um, we look at 21. We had hope he was the Messiah who would come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Can you imagine them saying we have hoped? They were even telling Jesus beside them that ah, we were hoping because their own plan and thought of redemption was quite different from what Jesus has done, not knowing that he has done the great, greatest work. Praise God. But if you look down, the Bible says he went on with him. He went home with them. Then verses 20, 31, suddenly there, he gave them bread. The Bible says it was when he broke the bread. 31 says suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Now, that's not all. He opened, came again to them in verses 45. Then he opened their minds to understand scripture. That's what we need. I just saw it, you. I didn't, I don't know. I just saw it. I just saw it, was it some days ago? Then he opened their minds to understand scriptures. I want us to first start by standing, reminding the Lord, Father, we are sold out to you. We are sold out to you. We, we are committed to you. The, you know, I was, I was praying in the Holy Ghost this when I was saying, God, anything you want me to do that I don't feel like doing it, make me do it. Condition my heart to do it. Father, help us to really, really, really stand as sons of God. In any way we have worked out or we have run dry because you can be full of activities and one might be dry. Do you know? A lot of, I heard from one of my, uh, my, my, my coordinators that a lot of believers, a lot of preachers, a lot of people don't really spend time in the word. We are full of activities, church, online program, online program. When do we really spend time? Because if there's any area we are struggling with, there's no light yet. There's no light yet. If it's financial, you need light. Health, you need light. What do I mean by light? Revelation knowledge. One revelation comes, boom, boom. It's kind of, as in, it breaks off. It breaks God. Let's ask God for strength. Let's ask God for grace. I understand. It's not easy. It's grace that is keeping us. And that's why when this question of grace, ask for grace. Father, we receive grace. We receive grace. We receive grace. We receive grace. The Bible says that light shines in darkness. Wow. Light is supposed to shine in darkness. No darkness trying to dominate light. In this dispensation, there's a lot of darkness. And we're not seeing anything. Because the Bible says that there's darkness, Isaiah 60, but there's dense darkness. There's gross darkness. But we are exempted. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, as seen in the book of Luke, let's pray with Luke 24, verses 45. Then he opened their minds to understand scripture. Father, open our minds to understand scripture. I have been meditating on that scripture. He opened their mind. How beautiful. He Until Jesus opened their mind to understand scriptures, they didn't understand it. Father, we ask for grace to understand scriptures. Grace to walk in light. We are light. We are supposed to radiate light. We are supposed to shine. We're supposed to equip other believers. We are supposed to equip the saints for the doings of God's work. Father, help us to become seers of your word in the name of Jesus. And as we finally end, let's jump to Ephesians. Let's pray the Ephesians prayers together. Let's pray the Ephesians prayers together. You can open your Bibles. You can unmute your mic if you want. If it's okay by PPI, or I'll just go on. Ephesians 1 16. You are going to personalize it. Yes. Personal we can mic after you read after you read the scripture we can meet your mics all right okay all right so i'll read it and we'll do it together i see not give thanks for you so we're going to say i see not give thanks for me making mm. mention of me in my prayers that the god of the lord of our lord the god of our lord jesus christ the father of god will give me the spirit of wisdom that's how we do it and we take it to 23 can we quickly do that together powerful I'll scripture sure i can use it efficiency what one 
Father, as we thank you for your word, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your word this morning. Mano kosiada, baba kosa, baba ba, mano lo kosi, baby, kina dano kosa, tata, baba kodo, baba ya, baba kodo kodo, ina dada kavi ya koko shia. Holy Spirit, as we begin to pray your word, Holy Spirit, let there be an instant Let's begin to do Ephesians 3 together again. Let's do the Ephesians 3 together. Ephesians 3 what? 14 to 21. I love you. This one, this one is pray like what PI said. This is for minister to in line with what PI said. Ephesians 3, 14 wow. to 21. This must be prayed yeah. every day. Yes. This one must be prayed every day. We, you know, there's something called strengthening scriptures. Strengthening scriptures. Mm. We just strengthen scriptures are scriptures you pray to keep moving. <laughs> mm. Ooh, we must pray strengthening scriptures. I have a lot of them. Maybe there's time I can share them during the course of this week. Let's pray Ephesians 3 together. Remember, you personalize it. Okay, Ephesians 3 from 14. Are we ready? Let's go. When I think of all this, I pray to the Father. Father, I should personalize it. You see that? I pray. All right. I pray. As you all do. Let's have a game. When I think of all this, I should be in the Father. 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 I Thank you. 
I know the love of Christ. Amen. Christ has made his home in our hearts as we keep walking, as we keep walking. Our roots will keep going down into God's home and we'll be strong in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister We'll continue tomorrow. Guys, I've always told people the power of prayer, praying scripture. I don't know about you, but you feel energized. You feel alive. I'm going to post that again, please. Um, for as many people, I saw this part um, of TPT. It supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scriptures. That's Luke 24, 45. That's the TPT version. It's unbelievable. I just want to encourage us. Again, you can copy all the scriptures that somebody wrote out. Let us pray the word. You know, sometimes we feel tempted to conjure prayer points and just pray in the Holy Ghost. It's great to pray in the Holy Spirit, but you must learn to pray the word. When you pray the, in the Holy Spirit on the foundation of the word, it is important. There was a day in church, I just talked about the word. Use the scripture to teach and pray. It is powerful. God will help us all in Jesus' name. The foundation today is to realize why we, how we go about self-deliverance, why God will leave us, how to engage in this time that the, the enemy is afflicting people, but we are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your holiday. I think it's a global holiday, I believe, anywhere in the world. Enjoy your holiday, and I pray the Lord will keep us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much, Staffy Kyle. Can we just say thank you? Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, for me, it's the way she laughs. Why she's, I, you see the power of the word, like she's having a moment with God. It's so beautiful to watch. God bless you. Thank you for being a blessing. Please take the link, invite your friends, invite your loved ones. Let us get into the word and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.